Welcome back. All right, so so one news item that came out last night, and it's really the only news I've seen from last night through to today, so I thought, why not do a video on this player's career to this point? And that's Phil Kessel joining the Vegas Golden Knights on a one-year, $1.5 million contract. And it'll be interesting to see if Phil Kessel gets his production back to where it was before he was an Arizona Coyote. Uh, and, and that very well could happen, but we'll see. Uh, he's a number five pick in 2006. For the record, he's currently 34, but he turns 35 on October 2nd. So by the time the puck drops, he's 35. And that is usually an area of time where players and men and women and people in general get slower once 35 and older hits. So 06 07, he ends up playing for the Bruins after battling testicular cancer. Played 70 games, 11 goals, 18 assists, 29 points. He wins the Masterton Trophy that year. Rightfully so. He was 11th in Calder voting as well. 2007-2008 in 82 games with the Bruins. He scores 19 goals, 18 assists, 37 points. Makes his playoff debut. Four games, three goals, one assist, four points. So good production in the playoffs. 2008-2009 uh, er, plays 70 games for the Bruins. 36 goals. Huge breakthrough. 24 assists, 60 points. And in the playoffs, he leads them in goals. He has six to go with five assists for 11 points in 11 games. But the Bruins, there's some off-ice stuff with Phil. And this is something that we've seen throughout his career. Phil Kessel's the kind of guy that may not feel like doing all the extra workouts. He may not feel like doing some of the stuff that the rest of his teammates are doing. The problem is he kind of gets away with it. 36 goals. Uh, he has scored a ton throughout his career. Would he be a more dynamic player if he did all that extra work? I, I don't know. It's part of his part of his personality, part of his DNA that he just I'm probably not gonna do that, coach. Like I, I can see that and, and I can I can respect it because he's had a nice long career. And uh the the things that he's been criticized over are things that uh, previous generation back in the eighties, I don't think anybody would have said anything. So maybe he's just born too late, right? Maybe he's he's an eighties throwback uh modern day. So the Bruins decide they've they've had enough. They can't re-sign him either. So they start shopping him around. Brian Burke's GM of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He calls the Bruins, who are also trying to work with LA and Nashville, according to Burke's retelling of this story. And Burke threatens to do, throw an offer sheet at him. He says either you guys deal with me or I'm going to throw an offer sheet at him. And so the Bruins made a deal with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And of course, the irony of that being, this was only a couple of years removed from Burke being in Anaheim and an offer sheet prying Dustin Penner away from his team. And he didn't take that well. I'm going to I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he wasn't happy about it. Uh, I mean, he hit it really well, but I don't think he was very happy about it. So September 18th, the deal gets made. He goes to Toronto, and this is a deal that has been absolutely analyzed into the ground. Uh, he was traded for a 2010 first-round pick that was Tyler Sagan, a second-round pick, and a 2011 first-round pick that became Dougie Hamilton. The odd thing is, you can see, and when I was looking up things for this to fill up this board, uh, there's still arguments over who really won that trade. Okay, Sagan and, ha and Hamilton go one way, Kessel goes the other, Sagan and Hamilton are the better players, Boston wins the deal. Did Boston fritter away the assets they had? Yes. Uh, Boston absolutely frittered away said assets, but still, that trade, I, I think if Toronto had Tyler Sagan down the middle... Dougie Hamilton on the blue line. Would Toronto then have had Austin Matthews? Maybe they wouldn't have been bad enough for long enough. Maybe maybe we wouldn't have seen a Toronto Maple Leafs team that needed uh, to, to basically clean house and, and try to get that number one draft pick. So it's an interesting topic, but his first year in Toronto, this is where the pressure's on, right? So Phil Kessel's gone from Boston where he's a secondary player for the most part. Uh, 36 goals tells you he's a primary scorer, but there were other guys who were, you know, the heat magnets when things went wrong in Boston. In Toronto, pretty quickly, Kessel becomes a heat magnet. 70 games that first year, 30 goals, 25 assists, 55 points. Kessel's a goal scorer. He's got one of the better shots in the league. Uh, and, and there were arguments about whether or not he was the best goal scorer. The one thing is, the day that he's traded to Toronto, he signs a five-year deal worth $5.4 million per season. So... The expectation is this is a five five plus million dollar a year forward. Let's see what he does. 2010, 2011, and 82 games, 32 goals, 32 assists, 64 points, and he plays in the All Star game. Now, of course, <clears throat> in the All Star game where they were choosing players, 
uh, that he famously went last. But again, um, a lot of this is reputation more than anything else, right? So 2011-2012, really big season for him. He sets career highs. In 82 games, he had 37 goals, which was 6th overall in the NHL. 45 assists, 82 points, which is also 6th overall in the NHL. And he played in his second straight All-Star game. 2012-2013, uh, that year I don't believe he was picked last. 2012-2013, uh, 48 games played, 20 goals, 32 assists, 52 points. Oh yeah, we're now into his games played streak. He is looking to eclipse the games played streak of Keith Yandel. That streak came to an end last season. Uh, Phil should be good to pass that streak pretty early in the season. So in the playoffs, Toronto made the playoffs that year. Um, or, yeah, wait. So he had the All-Star game there. And then 2012-2013 of 48 games, 20 goals, 32 assists, 52 points. The 52 points are seventh overall. Toronto makes the playoffs in 2013 in seven playoff games, four goals, two assists, six points. He plays well in that series. They just melted down in game seven. And uh, that was the only time that Toronto made the playoffs while he was there. Now, I think a fair question to ask is, uh, how much of Toronto's struggles have, have anything really to do with, with Kessel? And how much of it was his fault, right? And there was there was a lot of blame that got thrown at Kessel. I, I remember the posters, the missing posters. Anyways, 2013-2014 in 82 games, he scores 37 goals, which is 5th overall in the NHL to go with 43 assists. And 80 points, which was six. So for the third straight season, he's top 10 in NHL scoring. Uh, and October 1st of that year, he signs an eight-year extension worth $64 million. So $8 million per season. He's coming off a 37-goal season. That looks like a good contract. That should be fine. And this is where those eight-year contracts are interesting. And he signs this when he's 26. So, uh, or was he 25? He's 30. Anyways. 25-26 in that region, he signs that long-term deal. It kicked in in 2014-2015, which is bad timing because his, his stats dropped in 2014-2015. In 82 games, 25 goals, 36 assists for 61 points. So this is the first time he's been below 30 goals in a season, uh, a season beyond the 48-game uh, lockout shortened season. But 25 goals, the lowest total he'd had since 2007 2008 when he had 19 with the boston bruins so the production drops off 61 points altogether he does play in the all-star game again uh but toronto moves on right the toronto at this point now we're getting ready for the austin matthews era uh there was one year until they would draft austin matthews so before the 2015 2016 season gets kicked in uh july 1st of the 2015 offseason he is traded with a 2016 second round pick uh tyler Beggs as well as Tim Erickson, uh, in exchange for a 2016 first, which became Sam Steele, so that draft pick ended up in Anaheim, a uh, third-round pick, Scott Harrington, Kasperi Kapanen, and Nick Spaling. So, of course, Kasperi Kapanen ends up going back to Pittsburgh. Not, not doesn't seem like it's that long after that. But anyways, uh, Kessel's off to Pittsburgh. That first year in Pittsburgh in 82 games, 26 goals, 33 assists, 59 points. And there's a lot of arguments about how bad the contract is and how badly it's going to age. And it's only year two out of six or year two out of eight, I should say. But in the playoffs, Kessel earns his money in 24 games, 10 goals, 12 assists, 22 points, Stanley Cup. So while the Toronto Maple Leafs, they win the draft lottery, they get Austin Matthews that same spring slash summer, Kessel gets the Stanley Cup. 2016-2017, uh, in 82 games, he has 23 goals, 47 assists, 70 points. So this is where we've seen that transition. He's gone from being primarily a goal scorer to now being primarily a setup man. And it's one of those evolutions I see we see players make in their careers, which is really great to see. You know, that a player understands his skill set, evolves as he gets older, and he makes sure that that still fits with the team. In the playoffs in 25 games, 8 goals, 15 assists, 23 points. And I believe it was 2016 that I argued Kessel for Conn Smythe. But 2017, yeah, he was pretty good too. And another Stanley Cup. So back-to-back -back cup rings for Phil Kessel. And of course, there was the hot dog jokes. And he's going to eat the hot dog. And he, oh, look, he ate the hot dog out of the Stanley Cup. See, you, you can make all the jokes about Kessel. But he wins Stanley Cups. And he made $64 million on that contract. So... I don't think he necessarily cares. 2017-2018 uh, in 82 games, he has 34 goals, 58 assists, which is a career high, 
92 points, also a career high, and finishes 7th in the NHL on scoring. So that is the 4th time he's top 10 in scoring in the NHL, and that makes his contract look all right. In the playoffs, 12 games played, 1 goal, 8 assists, 9 points. 2018-2019 in 82 games, 27 goals, 55 assists, 82 points. But in the playoffs, Pittsburgh gets swept. He has one goal, one assist for two points in four games. And there was a lot of discussion about whether or not his own teammates were against him and wanted him out. And again, it comes down to, for Phil Kessel, he can just skate out on the ice and play and, and put up about a point per game. But he may not be doing as much work off the ice or as much work with practice as his teammates. Which again, I understand, makes some sense. Um, and, and it makes sense from his perspective. From his perspective, he's had a really long 1,200 plus game career doing it his way. So it may be difficult to talk him into doing it another way. June 29th, he was traded to the Arizona Coyotes, which is where he wanted to go. Uh, he was traded with Dane Burks, a 2021 fourth, for Alex Galchenyuk and Pierre Olivier Joseph. Uh, Galchenyuk, there was hope in Pittsburgh that he might score. And, and land on a top line, and it might work out. It just, it did not. Uh, Kessel goes to Arizona. His scoring drops off quite a bit. Now, he's no longer playing with Malkin. That's probably part of it. But in 70 games in 2019-2020 with the Coyotes, 14 goals, 24 assists, 38 points. Huge drop in points. In the playoffs, because Arizona wins in the play-in round against Nashville before losing against Colorado in what was officially the first round of the playoffs, he plays nine playoff games, one goal, three assists for four points. 2020-2021, shortened season, 56 games, 20 goals, 23 assists, 43 points. I thought Kessel played really well in the 2020-2021 season. This past season that we just had, 2021-2022, I think this was the roughest season I've seen Fell have. In 82 games, he recorded eight goals, 44 assists, 50, 52 points. So you can focus on the 44 assists if he plays on a scoring line in Vegas um, and, and if he's playing on a line with somebody who's able to, to get to where they need to be in front of the net. Kessel will get him the puck. And as long as they let Phil be Phil, I, I think they're going to be happy with the returns overall. Uh, he's played 1,204 games in his career, 399 goals. So his next goal will be number 400. 557 assists, 956 points. He's 44 points away from 1,000. And with two Stanley Cup rings, 1,000 points, we'll get into the argument at some point about whether or not Phil Kessel belongs in the Hall of Fame. It That argument's going to be there, especially if, think about it, he has a Master in Trophy, two Cup rings, and he could be the all-time leader in consecutive games played. Doug Jarvis didn't have anywhere near an, a, a Hall of Fame-worthy career. Great longevity in terms of his games played streak. Uh, but Kessel, you could argue that the games played streak combined with the Cups, combined with Masterton, at least makes that argument work. Uh, so, you know, we'll see. He's played 96 playoff games, so he's looking to reach 100 there. 34 goals, 47 assists, 81 points. His production in the playoffs has been good. And honestly, his production has been pretty solid throughout most of his career. I would look for with him in Vegas this year. Maybe he gets that bounce back to about 60 points. I would only count on about 15 of those being goals. But who knows? Uh, Vegas has rejuvenated careers before. Maybe Phil's is next. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. How many points do you expect uh, to see for Phil Kessel this year in Vegas? Uh, do you think it's a, it's a good move on their part? And is this the last hurrah? Like if he if he reaches that games played streak, and he should, if he has a really decent season with Vegas, does Phil at the end of the season say, you know what? I've I've got I've got money, I've got championships, I'm happy, things are good, I'm out. Does he do that or does he keep going? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And hey, thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.